What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Primetime Sports Podcast, hosted by Joe and May Larry. So today, the Northeastern Huskies baseball team will be facing the Boston Red Sox in Fort Myers, Florida today at 105, so just about 45 minutes until first pitch. I'm going to break down the lineups for each team, give a little insight into who's playing for the Red Sox, and talk about the Northeastern lineup as well. Northeastern coming into this game 2-1 and one on the year so far. They played UNC Greensboro last weekend. Won the first game, lost the second, then won the rubber match last Sunday to win the series, which is obviously a big way to end that series and, and go into this Red Sox game with some momentum. So talk about the Red Sox line to start out. Leading off, playing center field is Jaron Duran. Batting second, playing third base, who just got a huge contract from the Red Sox, Rafael Devis. Batting third, playing shortstop in replacement of Xander Bogats is Kike Hernandez. Batting fourth, the newly acquired Masataki Yoshida playing left field. The Red Sox just got him this offseason from Japan. Batting fifth, playing right field is Alex Verdugo. Batting sixth is the newly acquired designated hitter who's really a catcher, but he's playing DH today, Jorge Alfaro. Batting seventh, the first baseman, one of the Red Sox top prospects over the last few years. He's a rookie heading into this year as well, even though he got some at-bats last year in the MLB. Tristan Casas playing first base, batting seventh. Batting eighth, playing second base, Emmanuel Valdez. And then batting ninth is the catcher, Steven Scott, who will be doing the catching today for Red Sox minor league pitcher, Odenier Mesqueda. I apologize if I messed that up. Haven't really heard too much about him, but last year in AA for the Red Sox, he had a 5-3 and record for Portland and a 4.3 ERA, making 45 appearances out of the pen, 58 and two-thirds innings pitched, giving up 28 runs and had 76 strikeouts of 20 walks with a 1.125 whip overall. So we'll see how he does today versus the Northeastern Huskies. Excited to see how Masataki Ishida does in his Red Sox debut. Obviously, Jaron Duran has a clean slate this season. Hopefully, he has a bounce back here. I think Duran's a good player. I think last year, it might have just got to be too much of him. He was struggling. At the end of the day, when you're struggling and the fans aren't behind you, it's really hard to get your confidence back. I'm excited to see what Jaron Duran does this year. I haven't lost faith in Jaron Duran. I think he's going to be a really good player for the Red Sox one day. I'm excited to see him hopefully recover and start this spring training, getting off to a hot start. Now I'm going to give you the Northeastern Huskies lineup. Leading off for the Huskies is the senior, the shortstop, Spencer Smith. Batting second, playing center field, is Mike Sirota, a player that I've talked about a lot on my podcast over the last year. Very talented player. Hit 326 last year in his rookie season for Northeastern with a 411 on base percentage, a 511 slugging percentage, and a 922 OPS to go along with four home runs, 20 RBIs, 10 stolen bases in 13 attempts, and 17 walks in 164 plate appearances and 37 games played. Last summer, he also played for Hyannis in the Cape Cod Baseball League and thrived for them. He had a 339 batting average, a 442 OBP, a 532 slugging percentage with a 974 OPS to go along with two home runs, 14 RBIs, four stolen bases, and 12 runs scored with 21 hits and 62 at-bats in 18 games last year for Hyannis. This year for Northeastern, the first three games of the season, he has three of eight at the plate. With a double, a triple, four RBIs, six walks, with a 375 batting average, a 667 OBP, so 667 on base percentage, which is very impressive, a 750 starting percentage, and a 1417 OPS to go along with six runs scored in three games played. So, very impressive start to the season for Mike Sirota. He's reached base actually in 10 of 15 plate appearances, which is really impressive. So, I'm excited to see what he does today versus the Red Sox. He's a guy to keep your eye on in that Northeastern lineup. Batting third is the third baseman, Danny Crossan. Batting cleanup for the Huskies is Jimmy Sullivan, a catcher who's playing designated hitter today that Northeastern just got from UMass Lowell. Sullivan played very well last weekend in his debut as a Husky, so hopefully he stays hot today and has a good game against the Red Sox. Batting fifth is the backup catcher, Ed Jarvis, who will be catching today for Northeastern. Batting sixth is the left fielder, Harrison Feinberg, who Northeastern just got as a transfer from USC. Batting 7th is the first baseman, Jack Thorbon. Batting 8th is a right fielder, Luke Mazik. He's a sophomore now with a pretty good freshman season last year for Northeastern. And then batting ninth, the transfer from Kansas State, who's going into his third year in college baseball, a second year at Northeastern, the junior second baseman, Luke Beckstein. So we'll see how Northeastern does today. For Northeastern on the mound, it'll be James Quinlivan, a 6'6", 210-pound left-handed pitcher will be getting the start for Northeastern. He's a redshirt junior from Medway, Massachusetts. He actually went to Milton Academy as well last year for the Huskies. In six appearances, he was 0-1 with a 6-2-3 ERA. And where he struggled last year was walks. 
He had eight walks in four and a third innings pitched, eight walks to seven strikeouts in that 4.1 innings pitched. He only allowed one hit, though, in four and a third innings with three earned runs, and he held opposing batters to a .071, an 071 opponent batting average last year for the Huskies. Obviously, he did struggle with control, as I said. In 2021, as a freshman, he had a 138 ERA with a 2-0 record and 12 appearances out of the pen with seven strikeouts to five walks, giving up two earned runs in 13 innings pitched holding batters to a 167 opponent batting average. So we'll see how he does today versus the Red Sox. Obviously being a kid from Massachusetts and Northeastern has a good amount of kids from the area of Massachusetts and then New England in general. All of them, for the most part, probably grew up Red Sox fans. So this is a dream come true. And even if you didn't grow up a Red Sox fan, just to be able to play against the Red Sox and play against guys like Rafael Devis and Masataki Yoshida and Alex Radugo and Jaron Duran, I mean, that's just an honor in its own. So best of luck to the Northeastern Huskies today. I'm, ex I'm excited to see how they play in this game. It really is just a fun game. I mean, there's nothing, you know, on the line at the end of the day for either team. And one interesting thing I want to note, and this comes from the preview on Northeastern's athletics website, is that Northeastern went into opening day with 10 newcomers, five true freshmen and five transfers, and they accounted for five of the team's 12 hits and also added in Three innings pitched with three of the nine strikeouts that Northeastern had in the opening day shutout victory last Friday versus UNC Greensboro. And then on the weekend, as I said, transfer catcher Jimmy Sullivan was unreal. He was the CAA Player of the Week. Hit 417 last weekend for the Huskies, 5 of 13, with a three-run home run in game three of the three-game series last week versus UNC Greensboro. This will be the 18th time that the Northeastern Huskies will be facing the Boston Red Sox during spring training. The first time the teams have actually played each other since 2020, and that's because of the COVID pandemic. Cutting the last two years short in 2021 and 2022, the Huskies and the Red Sox haven't played since 2020. So we'll see how things go. I'm excited to see how Northeastern plays in this game. At the end of the day, as I said, there's nothing really on the line for either team. It's just... All about having fun and then having a nice rivalry between Northeastern and the Red Sox, both of them being so close to each other. Obviously, Fenway Park being right next to Northeastern's campus. It obviously brings a little bit of energy and also something for fans to watch around the area. So I will definitely keep you guys posted about what happens in the game. I will be rooting for the Northeastern Huskies to play well today. As I said, I mean, there's more on the line for them than the Red Sox. There's nothing really on the line for either team since it doesn't go on either team's record, but there's more on the line for Northeastern being able to play against the Red Sox. Obviously, it'd make... Players in their dreams come true, just being able to get up against the Red Sox and have a big hit or make a big play against Rafael Devers in the mound. Whatever it may be, obviously there's a lot more on the line for the Northeastern Huskies since, you know, they're playing against professionals today, which is really cool. So we'll see how the Huskies do. I will keep you guys posted and we'll do a recap at some point over the next few days. I will keep you guys posted about how the game goes. One last thing I want to say is, as I said earlier, keep your eye on Mike Sirota for Northeastern, the best player on that team, and I'm excited to see how he plays this season for the Huskies. Anyways, thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen to this. As always, I appreciate it. Best of luck to the Red Sox. Best of luck to the Northeastern Huskies. I hope you guys have a good one, and enjoy yourselves. Have a great weekend. Thank you.